Well, hello there, everyone. I hope you are ready to be polite today in English because that is what this English lesson is all about, how to be more polite in English. I suppose in the future, I could do a lesson on how to be rude. That might be a little bit more fun, but I think you will get more if we do a lesson on how to be polite. Before we do that, though, there are some people watching live I would like to say hello to. Mahmoud is here. Hope you're doing well. Adi the Thai. Adi has been a little sick over the past few weeks. I think he's doing better. Mode, how are you? Mode, I think, could benefit from this lesson. Mode likes to be a trickster. He's never rude, though. He just likes to play pranks. My friend from Mauritania is here. Two people from Mauritania are here. So welcome. Freddie Wolf here. He's from France. Casey, hope you're doing well. English Joy, good to see you. From Iran, hope all is well in Iran. I think the root, the world is rooting for you. Hopefully everything is going well there. Yulia, welcome. All right, already, how to be rude. Now, in today's lesson, we are going to talk about the importance of saying thank you and please and you're welcome but we're also going to talk about six or seven ways to use excuse me. And one of those ways is rude, just in case you need to be rude in English. We'll also talk about how Americans love to say, I'm sorry. But we are going to talk about exactly how we use I'm sorry. So maybe in your next English conversation, you'll be able to use I'm sorry just like an American. Luke is here. Welcome. Metallo. Oh no. Brazil, Poland are here. What if they meet in the World Cup sometime soon? And Jamie is here. Welcome. Jamie is actually not in the same state I'm in. She's in Connecticut. Uh, visiting our son. And um, but I think she's going to be joining here. Maybe next week she will be live. All right, Danny, France is well represented. And so is Italy. Italy. All right, let's do this. Let's talk. Wait, wait. One more thing. There was a new channel member. I would like to welcome them to the club. It's Jose. He joined before the live started. So got a little something for you, my friend. New member. Make sure you check the members tab for the Discord, the members chat, and the bonus videos. Yeah, so Jose, welcome. Gold members, we got Volley. Silver members and gold members, we got the Discord. And of course, bronze members, I think over a hundred extra videos. So welcome. Also before the stream, Amina. She's been a member for 29 months. That is over two years. That is crazy. So, Amina, thank you so much for your support over the years. All right. Let's get into the uh let's get into the lesson here. How to be more polite in English. Just in case you don't know what polite is, here are some other words that mean almost the same as polite. So polite means to be respectful, well-mannered, nice, kind. Who doesn't like somebody that is kind? So being polite in English is pretty important. The opposite of polite is rude. So we've already talked about rude. Rude, you might get fewer things done that you want, but... Maybe there is a time and a place to be rude. So here are some basics. There's, there's please. A please in your sentence when you want something never hurts. A thank you when you receive something or you get something. That never hurts either. And you're welcome. Notice the way your is spelled when we say you're welcome. 
you are, your, the way we spell it there. If you are listening on the podcast, I'm sorry, you can't see the way it is spelled, but it is spelled Y-O-U apostrophe, that little line above the letters in English we call an apostrophe and then an R-E. So Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, that means you are. A lot of native English speakers will spell your welcome the wrong way. They will spell it like possession. Like, this is my microphone. This is my cup. But you might say, hey, I like your cup, your cup. So the other person owns it. We call it possession in English. It's a possessive. Y-O-U-R means somebody else, not you, owns something. Ooh, I like your house. It looks nice with all of the lights on it. So when you are writing out your welcome, might want to do it like that. But if you write it the other way, you will look like a native English speaker because so many native English speakers spell it the wrong way. So let's talk about excuse me. I, I didn't count, but there are probably six, maybe seven different ways to use excuse me. And one, that's a little rude. So anybody wanting a rude lesson, we will have just a little bit, just a little bit of rude here. Hey, Bjar, hope you're doing well. Columbia is in the house. Thank you. Thank you. Audi the tie sending out a super sticker. Audi is so supportive of this channel. Thank you so much for all your support over the years. Got a little something for you, my friend. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, Audi. Thank you so much. It's good to see you're feeling better on volley. Believe uh, Audi was a little sick. I don't want to say what he had. He was a little sick for a while, but now he's good. At least the last time I saw him, he looked much better. All right, so um, let's look through the chat just to make sure there. Oh, look at this. Your headphones have two wires. Yeah, they're not wireless. So if we said wireless, they would not have any wires. Maybe when I hit 100,000 subscribers, we will go wireless. For now, we got the wires. We got the wires. Uh, yes, okay, Mahmoud, your and your, they are pronounced the exact same way. 100%. We call those homophones in English. Homophones. Two words sound exactly the same, have different spellings and also different meanings. So those two yours pronounced same way. Hey, you're welcome. I like your headphones. Same pronunciation. Same pronunciation. That's how I say it. I know other people say pronunciation pronunciation all right let's see what are some common ways that americans would say you're welcome so it's usually right after somebody says thank you so maybe you do something nice for somebody maybe you what could you do that's nice maybe you because you are such a good english speaker Maybe you help a friend with their English. And after the lesson, they might say, hey, thank you. And you can simply say, oh, you're welcome. How about some other ways to talk about you're welcome? You could say, ah, don't mention it. Don't, men don't mention it. Uh, native English speakers say that all the time. Instead of saying you're welcome, you can say, ah, don't mention it. How about this one? I like it quite a bit. No problem. No problem. Late. Jose. Wait. Jose. It jumped. Jose. You're right on time. We've only been going 10 minutes. 
This one might be a little shorter than most lessons, maybe a half an hour, because uh, the World Cup is coming on. USA is going to be playing the Netherlands. We are probably going to be losing to the Netherlands, but, you know, I think as Americans, we are just happy that we made it to the round of 16. John Wedge, hope you're doing well. Linda, she's also from Italy. Yeah, Italy didn't even make it. Sorry. Italy's not even there, but the United States, we made it to the round of 16. Hey, really quickly here. Hey, uh, Mode is actually saying something about cultural. Th I'm glad you mentioned that, Mode. Um, so much of this lesson is going to be from an American point of view. Now, if you watch Bob the Canadian, Canadians are some of the most polite people in the world, at least the ones I have met. So when we talk about being polite, it is so dependent on where that person is from. So I think Americans and Canadians we are also like almost the same when it comes to politeness. Of course, this will be different around the world. We are going to talk about burping in a little while. And in the United States, it's considered rude to burp. When you burp, you make a noise with your mouth. Maybe after you drink something like water or Sprite. If anybody drinks that, that soda called Sprite. So in some cultures, burping is okay. In the United States, in Canada, I think most uh, North America, South America countries, that would be considered rude, the opposite of polite. And we will talk about what you should say if you happen to burp by accident. But um, cultural question here. I love to hear Jamie's opinion too. Why do some women get a little offended when they're addressed as ma'am? And if so, what is the proper equivalent for sir? Yeah, so I can answer this. And Jamie may have already answered this, but um, it, it's a good question about ma'am. So in the American South, states like Alabama, Florida, Georgia, the American South, Louisiana. Um, Ma'am is considered polite. Now, when you get out of that area, some women will find it offensive because they think only old women are called ma'am. And that is not true. At least for me, where I've lived in the South, ma'am is just doesn't matter the age is just a polite term. Now, some parents in the American South will say to their children, their young children, four, three, five, six years old, they might say, hey, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, when they are doing something wrong. So I just said the United States and Canada, we are very similar when it comes to politeness. But even in the United States, there are certain cultural differences. Great point, Mode. Thank you so much. That's a good one. I'm always glad when Mode is in the chat because he offers so many good comments. Speaking of comments, that is what I'm doing. I am going down through the comments. And Arone from Italy says, don't mention it. I should, I sh I'm sorry to my Italian friends. I shouldn't have mentioned it. Okay, so great question. Osama, how do you politely ask someone about their personal information? Yeah, in the United States, we often don't get too personal, at least with strangers. We often don't even talk about somebody's looks. So if someone is carrying a little weight, if they are a little heavy, if they've packed on some pounds, strangers hopefully will not mention anything about weight. 
even if somebody is really skinny, somebody's race, somebody's religion in the United States, that is just not something that is discussed. So maybe if you have a good friend and you've known them for a while, you are comfortable with each other, you can get a little more personal. But that's that's a difficult thing. You should know somebody really well before you start asking. Marriage is probably okay. It's difficult though. Hey, are you married? That person might think you're interested in them. It's a little tricky with personal questions. Apple the Frog is back. Welcome. Thailand is well represented. Wait, what? Mode what? Consolation game. Come on. No, we're, t- we're winning the whole thing. Come on. Just, t- just kidding. We'll probably lose today. All right. Williams has a question about British people. I hope because I am not British. There could be some slight differences when it comes to being polite in England. Brent, is it true that British people are more polite than Americans because their English is more formal? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have heard some people, it's such an opinion. Some people think Americans are really polite. We're not that rude. I guess it just depends on which Americans you meet. I don't know. I think there are rude people everywhere and polite people. I would like to think Americans are pretty polite. Yeah, and Osama says Canadians are very polite. For some reason, they always say sorry. Or they might say sorry, sorry with their accent. Sorry. We're going to talk about sorry with Americans too. Yes, Sorry. They say sorry quite a bit. All right. So Jamie says, going back to the question of of ma'am. So she's the expert. She is from the South. She is a woman. Ma'am in certain parts of the U.S. is considered rude because in the North, that's where we live now. We live close to Canada. Women tend to think ma'am is referring to an older female. So pretty much what I said. I think that's the general consensus. Big English term there. A general consensus is what most people think. A general consensus. Amina is here. There was a shout out earlier for you, Amina. Welcome, Cecilia. Argentina is in the house. Lots of people from Argentina. Jamie says, in the South, where I am originally from, I was taught at a very young age to address any woman as ma'am. If I did not do this, my parents would scold me. Yes, ma'am and yes, sir are considered manners. Yeah, so later on in the English lesson, we are going to talk about manners. And you might hear the term, mind your manners. Mind your manners. That is usually what parents will say to their children when they want them to be polite. Hey, we're going to visit grandma. Remember, mind your manners. Mind your manners. Where were we? We were talking about all of the ways that you can use excuse me in English. And there are quite a few. You can say excuse me to get somebody's attention. So maybe they are doing something. Maybe in my classroom, I'm hoping if I am typing on my iPad or I am writing something down and a student needs me to do something, I'm hoping they will say, oh, excuse me, can I get your attention? Excuse me, do you mind? We are going to talk about questions too. A lot of the time, we will not say exactly what we want. We will put it in the form of a question and we'll do that soon. And maybe you can hear my daughter. She, she's, uh, she is also sick and she's coughing. Maybe I should tell her, Hey, get in another room. So we can't hear you coughing. Maybe you can't hear it though, but yeah, she's been sick for like over a week. Um, so here's something you, if you need somebody's attention, they are doing something else, but you want them to focus on you. You could say, Oh, excuse me. 
Could I please, there's that word, please. Could I please have a cup of coffee? So maybe you go into a cafe and the barista or the person who makes coffee is busy. Maybe they are cleaning the coffee machine. They are preoccupied. They are busy doing something. You could say, oh, excuse me. And then a question. Excuse me. Could I please have a cup of coffee? Instead of say, so if we're going to be rude, hey, I need coffee. So there's a demand there. Hey, hey, be careful with that. Hey, all right, let me write that in the comment. Hey, the, when I was younger, hey was very rude. Hey, right there. Hey, hey, it's not as rude now. But I always think excuse me works better than hey, hey, hey. Um, when I was younger, my parents, when I said hey, they would say hey is for horses. Hey is for horses. In English, horses, the food that they eat most of the time, it's called hay. Hey, there's hay bales. I have mentioned hay in past English lessons. So if I said, hey, sometimes my parents, would, hey, hey is for horses. Hey is for horses. There you go. She's still coughing. Maybe she's having breakfast up there, but I don't, you know, my mood says, I think Americans don't indulge in anger. Uh, sometimes, sometimes we do. I don't know. Um, I think most people are kind of the same. Um, so. I think we have as many, as many, um, rude people as we do polite people in most places. So Yulia says, is there a difference between excuse me and sorry? We will talk about that very soon. The short answer is no. So let's go back to that question I had here. Excuse me. Could I please have a cup of coffee? Now you want coffee. You could say, hey, give me some coffee. Rude. But instead of saying excuse me to that same person who works at Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts, you could say, oh, I'm sorry. Could, could I please have a cup of coffee? Works the same way. Most cases, I'm sorry, excuse me, they can be used interchangeably. You can also say, excuse me, if somebody is in your way, maybe you are in a room and you need to get out and there is a person blocking your way. There is a person standing really close to the door. You could squeeze by them, but that also might be rude. Brush up. I've talked about that English phrasal verb before. If you brush up, against somebody it means you just kind of touch them as you're going past that can be considered rude so if you want someone to move out of your way instead of saying hey move get out of the way get get that can be rude you can say excuse me excuse me would you mind moving so i can get past excuse me can i get by you that works. Again, there is a question. You could, would and could work really well. You could say, excuse me, would you mind moving? Excuse me. Could you, could you please move? Is it, can you hear the coughing? Please let me know in the, uh, I mean, she can't help it, but she can also, I can get her, uh, okay. So Mahmoud's child is doing something, but, uh, maybe you can't hear. Hopefully the microphone is drowning out the sound, but we are live. Hey, hey, it's for horses. That's right. That's right, John. Hey, could you stop coughing? I am still asking a question, but it's a little rude. Oh, excuse me, daughter of mine. Would you mind coughing in, an, in another room? Is the greeting, hey, everyone, slightly rude? I mean, I can hear, I can't unhear the coughing now, but hopefully it's not too bad. Uh, excuse me. Can I get a, 
excuse me, can I get it? It's so important. That will work almost every time you need something. Uh, excuse me, could I, could I, would you mind passing me the salt? I'm sorry. Would you mind passing me the salt? Could you, could you please pass the salt? It's good stuff. Um, okay. Now. Yeah. Okay. John can hear my daughter. Well, she'll, she'll just be part of the live stream. We have a guest today. That's my coughing daughter upstairs because of the flood. There are no doors where I am filming. So once the basement is fixed, there, there it goes. I, okay. Anyways. Hey, stop coughing. Rude. That's rude. I could send her a text, but whatever. I think she's getting breakfast up, upstairs. All right. So um, where were we? I'm confused by the coughing. Yeah. Excuse me. Could I get past you? So where somebody is near the door. So you want to get by them. No, excuse me. Could you, could you move aside? Could you move aside? That's pretty polite. And just like Yulia was saying, I'm sorry. Also works like, excuse me. They're both. We'll talk about many of the ways Americans say, sorry. We say sorry for almost everything though. Just like Canadians. Sorry. Americans say sorry for everything. You can say, excuse me, if you need to interrupt somebody. So just like if somebody is doing something else, like cleaning the coffee machine, what if somebody was talking to somebody else, but what you need to say is really important, a good way to interrupt what they are doing to stop what they are doing is excuse me. So maybe two other people are talking. You are not involved in the conversation, but you need to tell someone something. Oh, excuse me. C can I bother you for a minute? Excuse me, could I bother you for a minute? That's a good way to interrupt somebody. So let's say somebody's car is being stolen. You, maybe you live in an area where there is a lot of crime. And you think their car might be, be being stolen. But they're talking with someone. You could say, excuse me, sorry to interrupt, but uh, your car is being stolen. I'm pretty sure that person... That conversation might be important, but also their car is important. I'm not sure how many times you will be able to interrupt somebody because their car is being stolen. But if that ever happens, just remember, you learned it here. Speak English with this guy. Excuse me. Sorry to interrupt, but um, your, your car is being stolen. Good to know. I'll try to stop that. Thank you. Could you please help me? Grab that person stealing my car? Sure. That would be very polite. Excuse me. Did you drop this? Maybe you're walking down the street and something falls out of somebody's purse or falls out of somebody's pocket. I mean, they're walking. They probably don't want to be interrupted. Hey, excuse me. Can I? Do you want to buy these sunglasses? they're not going to want to be stopped for that. But if they drop something that's important from their pocket, excuse me, did, did you drop this? They might say, yes, that is my money. Thank you for finding it for me. How about this? We talked about this at the beginning of the lesson. Body functions. I'm not going to go into all of them, but sneezing, burping, coughing. A lot of times in the United States and in Canada, um, if somebody sneezes, hachu, that's what we say in English, hachu, hachu. It's my best attempt at a fake sneeze. A lot of times when that person sneezes, they say, excuse me. And also being polite, if this was a real sneeze, I just sneezed directly into my hand. Probably not the best. Achoo. Oh, glad to meet you. Probably not. Uh, in the United States, we will often try 
to sneeze in our sleeve. I'm wearing sleeves today. Sleeves, a long sleeve shirt. Being polite, try to sneeze into your sleeve, not in your hand. And then you go to shake somebody's hand. Uh, no, thank you. That's polite. If you don't want to shake somebody's hand because they might get you sick, no, thank you. A lot of times we'll do a fist bump, maybe. If somebody comes to shit, you, no. you could change it. If you are afraid of getting sick and then find some hand sanitizer or wash your hands after. In the U.S., you might hear another person say, bless you after you sneeze. So if you sneeze, a chew into your hand, they might say, oh, bless you. Maybe God bless you. Or maybe anybody watching from Germany, Anya, Gesundheit. That I know that's German, but in the United States, you will often hear that after somebody sneezes. So the person sneezing might say, oh, excuse me. It's not their fault. Hachu, oh, I'm sorry. They can't help it. But they might, the other person might say, oh, Gesundheit. So if you're coughing, you won't hear that. <coughs> oh, excuse me. You might say, excuse me, if you're coughing. But it's only with sneezing that we will say, bless you or Gesundheit. Maybe you, get, you try to get past somebody or you don't see somebody is there and you do bump into them or you do brush up against them. You could say, excuse me. Like, oh, excuse me. Sorry, I, I didn't know you were there. So you could say, excuse me, and I'm sorry. Really helps. Really helps. Let's check the chat just to make sure. Constantine is here. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Um, whoa, I'm not good. I didn't even want to bring that up, but um, same goes. I'm not even. Ugh, I'm not even gonna say it. But my mood. Thank you for saying it. Podcast. You don't know what we're talking about, but it's the opposite of burping. Maybe same thing. Same. All the body functions. Yeah, dude. Enough with the cough. Oh, we can't hear her. I thought somebody said they could hear. Okay. So Jamie said, we can't hear it. <laughs> Linda, poor girl. Coughing is really annoying. My daughter has had a fever with a cold for a week. Oh, that's too bad. And I've got a headache just for hearing her cough 24 seven. Yeah. What a bad dad. Hey, stop coughing. I'm teaching English down here. Uh, yeah. I, my mood. I don't know, man. I'm going to try to do another live, but um, after after teaching all day, I did do a live on Wednesday. My brain, I'm not a smart man. So after teaching for like six and a half hours and then trying to, to do this, it's, it's really tough. It's really tough. All right. English joy. When you sneeze, the, I don't even know what that English word is. Intra thoracic pressure in your body momentarily increases this will decrease the blood flow back to the heart all right I'm, I'm not sure what that means but um so earlier this week i did have a um latin and greek root lesson with ject and that does mean to throw so i have never seen that word intrathoracic before but using some greek roots i'm pretty sure thorax or thoracic has something to do with the throat and intra intra means within the throat within so i've never seen that word before but i think it has something to do with something inside the throat inter means across two things intra means inside so hopefully hopefully someone knows that oh thank you thank you mega mega's here from india she says i am smart all right thank you Privet. 
Privet. Welcome. All right, let's go back to the lesson here. Hope everyone's doing well in the chat. Excuse me is great if you don't understand what somebody said. So this might be the most important one of all because if you are learning English, there is a good chance you will not understand everything that somebody is saying. So if you don't understand them or they are talking too softly, excuse me is a great way to get them to repeat something. So you could say, oh, excuse me, could you repeat that, please? Could you repeat that, please? Small, I want to be as perfect as possible. So let me add that comma right there. All right. I think that's perfect. There should be a comma right there. Excuse me. Could you repeat that, please? That's a great way to get somebody to say what they said again. And as a, an English learner, you might need that quite a bit. Maybe they are talking too quickly. Oops, slow down. Excuse me. Could you could you please slow down? Excuse me. I, I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. It's another way to say you didn't understand. And you might sound like a native English speaker if you do that. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. Is another way to ask somebody to repeat what they just said. Excuse me. I didn't catch that. Um, another one I don't have here, but come again. Excuse me. Come again. It's not rude. It's, it's very natural in English, but excuse me. Come again. Uh, most of the time we would just say, come again. Two short words. I can write it in the chat, but it is another way to say very like a native English speaker would say, come again. Probably not younger people in their teens, but if you are in your 30s or your 40s or your 50s or your 60s, I know there are some people in the chat in their 60s, this would make perfect sense. So if you are 30 or older, you might say, come again. It's exactly, I mean, that's a lot of native English speakers will say that in the United States. What'd you just say? I think it's rude. It might be. So one thing we haven't talked about yet is tone. So a lot of times the tone in your voice will help it sound more polite. I will talk about this towards the end of the lesson. But when you raise the tone of your voice, it does help with sounding more polite. If it's more flat, like I will read that both ways. What did you just say? So my the tone, the pitch of my voice is higher. Or this could sound rude. Same exact words. What did you say? And I'm sure that's very similar to how your native language works. Of course, there will be some cultural differences. But uh, what did you say? What did you say? So the tone of your voice really affects how something sounds. Hey, I, I didn't quite catch that. What? Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Um, I don't know if that is exactly rude. Wait, what? Um, but a lot of like younger people will say this. I don't think it's exactly rude. It's not polite. It's not rude. Wait, what? So if you want to sound really, really like a native English speaker, and maybe one who is a little younger. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? You can practice that maybe. Wait, what? Huh? Huh? Now that, that might be a little rude. Huh? But if you are like good friends with somebody, say that quite a bit. Huh? Like Jamie and I, when we're talking, I mean, husband and wife. Huh? I don't think it's rude, but if you are interviewing for a job and you say, huh, that would be rude. But when you're talking with your friend, huh? Wait, what? Huh? Yeah. Not rude. Not rude. 
Ooh, my mood said I'm the best. I like hearing that. <laughs> I like hearing that. Thank you. Wait, taxi driver? Are you talking to me? Are you talking about the movie with Robert De Niro? Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? You must be talking to me. I'm the only one here. Are you talking to me? Love that movie. It's not easy to watch because it's so depressing, but duh, mode. Yes, duh. Yeah, that would be rude. I need to save that for the rude lesson. But, uh, duh. When you think somebody said something stupid, if you want to be rude or they are a good friend, you can say, duh. Like, I knew that. Duh. Be careful. Be careful with duh. All right. Just check in the chat making sure would you mind very british would you mind we are going to talk about some british stuff here pretty soon oh i gotta watch the time gotta get ready for the u.s game all right you can also say excuse me in a rude way so let's talk about being rude so if somebody says something you don't agree with or they do something you think is rude and you want to be rude back you can say excuse me in a rude way and it sounds like this excuse me so maybe somebody bumps into you really hard you don't know that person where did they come from why did you bump into me excuse me so they probably should be saying, excuse me. So you are going to do it for them in a rude way. Excuse me. I'm walking here. I'm walking here. That's from another 70s movie. What is it? Urban Cowboy, I think it is. Dustin Hoffman. He hits his hand on the tax. I'm walking here. I'm walking here. So uh, excuse me. So let's talk about saying no in a polite way because there will probably be some times where you have to say no but you want to do it in a polite manner how about this maybe there is a party on friday night maybe you don't want to go at all maybe you don't really like this person maybe you don't want to spend time with them but you don't want to be rude you can say oh I'd really like to, but I'm busy. Sorry. Again, sorry. Sorry works almost every time. Here, you can't really use excuse me. Sorry works better. Excuse me doesn't make sense. But, oh, I'd really like to, but uh, I'm washing my hair. That used to be an excuse that women would give men if they didn't want to date them nobody would believe that i would have to wash my hair that doesn't take that long because i have so little hair but that was when i was growing up that was a very common excuse if a woman didn't want to do something oh i'm sorry i'd really like to but um i'm washing my hair i'm sorry but so that works not excuse me in this case but I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but uh, I have something I have to really do. You don't, you don't have to. They, they might ask you, oh, what do you have to do? That might be rude, especially if you don't know that person very well. They should just accept your excuse. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm busy that night. Did you hear what I said there? Your excuse. It's spelled the same way as excuse me, but an excuse is a reason you can't do something. And it's a good reason. So maybe you miss work because you're sick. You might have a doctor's excuse. And a doctor's excuse is when they write a letter letting your boss know, no, they're really sick. They are legit sick. Legit. Very native way to say really no they're they're legit sick no 
They're really sick. Honest. So excuse. It's pronounced differently from excuse me. Excuse, excuse. An excuse is a good reason for not doing something. Gotta love English, right? So what if someone loses a loved one? That's a really good, a really polite way to say someone died. So what if someone loses a loved one? I'm sorry for your loss. That works really well. Oh, I heard about your cousin. I'm sorry for your loss. That works really well. Now, you're saying I'm sorry. You didn't have anything to do with their death. You didn't kill them. That would be your fault. That would be on you. You would have done a bad thing. No, you're just, oh. So it's like, I am sorry you feel bad. You're not taking responsibility. You didn't cause the problem. We say, I'm sorry you're feeling bad. A lot of times, that's what I'm sorry means. Oh, sorry for your loss. Sorry for your loss. So a couple other things. When you want something, could, this was mentioned in the chat earlier, could and would work really well. You can use can or will, and those are fine, but could and would are just a little bit more polite. So could you please pass the salt? Maybe you're sitting at the dinner table and you want to uh, put a little salt on your food, but the salt shaker is a little out of your reach. You could say, oh, could you please pass me the salt? Would you please pass me the salt? Those two are interchangeable most of the time. Oh, could you, uh, could you speak up a little? I didn't hear what you said. Would you mind speaking up a little? I didn't hear what you said. That's another way to ask somebody to speak a little louder. So we have talked about this before. Have you noticed that I'm always raising the tone of my voice when I'm trying to be polite? So if you make your voice sound a little higher, it does sound more polite than if your voice is flat or lower. Now there's a difference. Notice I said raising the tone of my voice. If you raise your voice, it's another way to say like you're yelling or you're screaming. Sometimes as a teacher, I might have to raise my voice to get my students' attention. Is it rude? Yeah. But have you ever worked with 13 and 14-year-olds? Sometimes the only way they listen is if I raise my voice a little bit. And I might say, hey, 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 guys. I don't, I don't really say this, but hey, guys, could, could you stop talking? Is it a little rude? And eh, maybe. Does it grab their attention? Yeah, definitely. Let's, um, yeah. So Constantine is wondering about when you don't hear somebody, you don't hear all of the words. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't get, yeah, you could say that. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get what you said. You mind repeating it? Um, I wouldn't say get is, I wouldn't say get is uh, rude. Um, if you're trying to be really polite though, you might say, oh, I, I didn't understand what you said. Would you mind repeating it? Yeah. So those hard consonant sounds at the end, the, the get, it's a little bit harder at the end with that T. And sometimes those kinds of words sound a little more rude. Not always, but, oh, look at that. How polite. Mode eggs. I'm sorry, but I need to go. For real, for real. All right. So he really has to go. But uh, that is very polite. Nice job. Hey, thank you. Look at that. Thank you, Mahmood. I can't forget. I got 10 minutes, right? That's all right. We got... um. Yeah, okay, um, so Audie, I know Audie does a lot of karaoke, okay? So let's talk about this. So karaoke, 
not even an English word. It's a Japanese word, but we use it in English all the time. So if you want to get on stage, yeah, this is a great way to say it. Hey, could I go? Could I go? Let's let's do it real here, okay? Hey, could I go on stage, please? That's really fast, right? Could I go? Could I? Could I? Could I go on stage, please? Um, you might say, "Hey, do you mind if if I go next?" That's another way to say it too. Hey, do you mind if I go next? So we're gonna get to mind in a minute, but sometimes we use mind as if like bothered would you be bothered if i go on stage next we probably wouldn't say that we would just use mind instead hey would you would you mind passing me the salt would you mind if i went on stage next so that that's really polite so when you say next you are admitting there might be somebody else before me that wants to go you could, hey do you mind if i go next that's yeah, it's a really good one. What's that? Is that, is that a super sticker right there? Memo Travels. Oh, that's so kind of you. Thank you so much. Got a little something for you. Where is it here? Got it. Let me find it. This is unexpected. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. And I just stole a drink of water while that was playing. Also, I forgot to mention, hey, if you want a mug like this, I don't usually promote merch, Mimo Travels. I'm going to leave that up for a second. But if you are looking for any kind of English learning merchandise, today and tomorrow only, it's a good sale. It's 15% off plus free shipping. So if you want, let's see, I got this here. Let's say you want this mug. I like this mug. It's an English junkie. It means you love learning English. Look at that. There's a tree growing out of somebody's head. It means there's a lot going on in there. So if you want, um, there's a link in the description. But let's put this up here. If you go and you want this mug... Okay, so you can click on here. If you notice, it's $14.49. But because of the sale, if you click on there, go to your shopping cart. I might have two. I might have two. I just want one. Okay. It's going to take that 15% off for you, and it's going to give you free shipping. So like you're saving $6. So if you are watching this on replay or later, don't, you know, there will be other sales. Make sure you get it when there is a sale. But right now, if you want some English learning merchandise, I know Angelo picked some up earlier this week. Somebody else, there were a couple sales this week. So um, it's a really good sale. 15% off, free shipping. If you're watching this later, make, don't. Make sure there's a good sale. Make sure there's a good sale. All right, just in case you wanted that, need that mug. That's a, it's a good mug. It's a good mug. It's a little more expensive because there are, there are two colors, but I thought I didn't want a cheap looking mug. I think it looks pretty sweet. So let's, um, I know what a deal. I think, I think so. What a deal. I, I only try to order things when there is a sale and in that shop, there are sales a couple times a month. But this is the best one I've seen all year, which is why I wanted to mention it. Sometimes there's 20% off, 25% off, but the shipping, that's how they get you. That's how they get you with the shipping, but free shipping, just in case you want that. So what if someone offers to do a favor for you? Maybe like take a shift at work. Maybe you are busy but you have to work. And then that person said, oh, I'll work for you. I'll take your shift. Or maybe somebody will give you a ride somewhere. Maybe they will give you a lift. That's another way to say somebody is 
taking you somewhere. Somebody is driving you somewhere in their car. You could say, are, are you sure you don't mind? Are you, are you sure you don't mind? It's just another way to, to be polite. Once they offer, oh yeah, I can take you to the store tomorrow. To be really polite, once they offer, you can say, oh, are you sure you don't mind? No, I don't mind. Come on, I'll take you. No, I don't mind. I'll work for you. No problem. Hope that helps. When you're being polite, you'll hear mind your manners. We talked about that earlier. That is definitely from the British. Mind. When I was in um, England many years ago, I'm not sure if this is still true, but when I went on the subway or the tube, as they call it, they always said, mind the gop, mind the gop. And there's a little gap. There's a little hole when you step off the subway and there's always a reminder, mind the gop. This is like, remember. So we sometimes use mind when we're talking about, see, I got something here. Mind can be like the brain and so like on the mug, like that, that's like somebody's brain in there. But sometimes we refer to the brain as the mind, but then sometimes mind will mean like bother. Oh, I'm sorry to bother you. Like, do you mind? And then sometimes it's remember, like mind your manners. It's another way to say, remember, right? That, that, that match starts in four minutes. So I need to go upstairs. I need to watch that match, but I would like to thank you all for joining. Thank you so much. Thank you. For, thank you for the super sticker. Mimo travels, Audie, the tiger or er, Audie, the tie earlier left one new channel member, Jose Amina. Thank you for being a channel member for 29 months. So, all right. Thank you so much. Audie, the tie. Maybe he is a tiger though. When he gets up to sing karaoke, I've heard him sing. He has a good singing voice. Uh, Constantine says, I will buy something when I have an opportunity. Well, that's fine. But if you don't have an opportunity this weekend, just wait until the next sale. It'll be there. Uh, how much was the mug? I think after everything, it was $12, $12. They might add some tax depending on where you live, but I like the mug, but if you don't, I get, I gotta go. Look at that. Sound like a native English speaker right there. A zoom class. Look at lots of English, lots of English. Nice. No. Yeah. It's impossible to pay. I asked them this week, can, is there international shipping? And they assured me there was, but I know they don't accept all currency. Sorry, 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 sorry. Just checking the chat for the last. Okay. Jamie's heading out too. U US is on now. All right. I got to go. Go USA. Go USA. Uh, I got so many used books on Amazon. I love it. Love it. All right. Bye-bye. Yulia, Mahmood, Constantine, Mega. How can I forget Mega out in India? Williams, big soccer match later on. Oh, hang on. Before we go, Argentina, hopefully. I'm talking really quickly, but this is a lot of times the way I talk. Um, there was a chant. Maybe we will hear it today. The U.S. soccer fans are chanting, it's called soccer. It's called soccer. You know how England, in English, I think most people say football. But in the World Cup, I don't think England has ever beaten the U.S. I think we've played three times. We beat them once in the 1950s, and we've tied twice. So I don't know, maybe the world should start calling that sport soccer. If you want to chant with me, it's called soccer. It's called soccer. 
It's got a nice ring to it. I like the way it sounds. Hey, I love these English lessons. I will try to go next week. I love seeing all of the names in the chat. Again, one more shout out. I think that was a big one. A super sticker there. Thank you. It's still on the screen. Let me put that back there. Thank you so much, Mimo Travels. Thank you so much. That means a lot. All right. New lights back there. Super stickers, channel memberships. Thank you so much. I love doing this. So hope you love watching it. Over an hour of listening to a native English speaker speak, hopefully not too quickly, not too slowly, just the right pace. I know I'm speaking more quickly now though, because I got to go, got to go, got to go, got to go watch that match. All right. Thank you all. See you soon. Adios, amigos.